So now we're on to general question types. General question types, you do need to understand the entire passage as a whole to answer these questions. You want to save these for the end. For many passages on the SAT, the first question will be general, but you want to do those last. You want to use the specific questions to learn the passage first before you tackle the general questions. So if you save the general questions for last, which do require you to understand the entire passage, then by the time you attack and skimmed the passage, then you've done all the specific questions and you've learned what it says on lines 21 to 30. Then you learn what it says on lines 41 to 48. Then you learn what it says on lines 54 to 57. By the time you piece all that together, you'll be better equipped to go answer a general question, which is going to require you to understand, again, the entire passage as a whole. So let's look at two general questions briefly to give an example. We're going to look at question number one on practice test three. Which choice best summarizes the passage? That's the first question for this passage, question number one. And clearly, you do need to understand the entire passage to know how to best summarize the passage. So the answer is not really going to be found so much in one specific part of the passage. You are going to have to understand the entire passage. So for the sake of time, um, what I don't recommend you do for these questions is to go back and start rereading the passage and re-skimming the passage. Um, if you can't rely on the information you've gained from doing all the specific questions and skimming the passage, if you can't rely on that alone to give it your best educated guess on this question, just, just put something down and move on. Don't spend valuable time trying to go back through the passage. So take your best educated guess with what you've learned so far, mark something down, and then move on. So if you did want to go back and you were curious, the correct answer is B. That's the main idea of what this passage is about. Let's look at question number 11 as another example. What function does the third paragraph serve in the passage as a whole? So don't get confused because there's line references right there. Don't think that this is a specific question. First of all, it's the very first question listed for this passage. And again, the first question listed for each passage tends to be general questions. And it's saying, what function does the third paragraph serve in the passage as a whole? Well, to know that, you've got to understand the entire paragraph, uh, the entire passage as a whole. So for this one specifically, if we look back at the notes we took when we attacked the passage, it actually helped. We kind of mapped out and had a blueprint for the passage. So the third paragraph is right here. What did my notes say against public transportation? Well, I know that this entire passage was in favor of public transportation. And this was the only paragraph that went against public transportation. So let me kind of keep that in mind as I answer the question. And the correct answer is A. It acknowledges that a practice favored by the author, which is public transportation, does have some limitations. So there are some limitations to public transportation. That's what that third paragraph served to the passage as a whole. Again, if you couldn't figure that out with everything you've gathered on your own, give it your best educated guess and move on. The last question type on reading comprehension section one is chart and graph question types. I love these question types because they're straightforward and easy to answer. Um, so on the reading test, these graphics will be fairly simple and straightforward. The questions will not require you to do any fancy type of calculations. There's not all the strategies we've learned so far. It really doesn't apply as much to chart and graph questions. But what I will say is review the chart or graph and just to kind of understand exactly what's going on. 
review them as a whole before you answer those question types. So let's look at two chart and graph questions. We'll look at question number 19 and 20. So question number 19 says, which choice is supported by the data in the first figure? So instantly I know we're dealing with charts and graphs. So before I even try to really dive into the question, you want to understand what the, the, the chart is saying. You want to have a good solid understanding of it just to warm your brain up to what's going on. So take a second, press pause, look at these two figures right here, understand what they're saying, then go back to questions 19 and 20 and see if you can answer those on your own. And then press play and we'll compare notes. So what's the first figure saying? The primary occupation of public transportation passengers in US cities. Basically of everybody that rides public transportation, what are their jobs? What's their primary job? You have people that are employed outside the home, you have students, you have people that are retired, you have homemakers, people that are unemployed. That's all this is saying. The main job that people have who ride the bus in US cities. That's it. Easy to understand. Figure two, the purpose of public transportation trips in US cities. When people take public transportation, what's the purpose of that trip? Why are they taking that trip? Well, some people are going to work, some people are going to school, some people are going shopping or going out to eat. So that's all that's saying. Okay, so we have a good understanding. The job of people who take public transportation and why people pick, take public transportation. Where are they going? Okay, I got an understanding. Let's go back and look at the questions. So which choice is supported by the data in the first figure? The correct answer is A. The number of students using public transportation is greater than retirees. So how many students are taking public transportation? 10.7. How many retirees are taking public transportation? 6.7%. So there are more students than retirees that take public transportation. If you were thinking along the lines of choice D, this word right here is what makes it wrong, less often. Unemployed people use public transportation less often than people employed outside the home. There's nothing that says in that chart about how often they ride public transportation. It simply just says what their job is. So it's a really important distinction. It's that one little word that made the entire answer choice D wrong. So number 19, the correct answer is A. Question number 20, taken together, the two figures suggest that most people who use public transportation, again, the correct answer is A, are employed outside the home and take it to work. So on this figure, the majority of people, what their job is, they're employed outside the home. That's the biggest number at 72%. And they take it to work. That's the biggest number, 59.1%. So taken together, those are the primary people that take public transportation. So that concludes section one, reading comprehension. Again, just to recap, all of the strategies that we covered are super important. You have to remember them and learn them and be sure to implement them. You notice that I was writing everything down as I was doing my examples. That would take time to write out the rephrase question and to write out your summarized answer. The goal is to get good enough to where you don't have to do that each and every time and write it out in full detail. Because again, that does take time. But I just did it to illustrate for the lesson but you wanna get good to where you can do that mostly in your head. So keep that in mind. Won't that take time to write everything out? Again, try to get so fluent at it that it becomes second nature. You can do it in your head and answer the questions a little bit faster. And I guarantee you, your score will improve on that. So 
As always, I really appreciate you tuning in. I'm Josh with Top Score Tutor, and remember, with consistent and quality practice, it is impossible for your SAT score not to improve. Best of luck. See you in the next video.